Amen. I know with the price of gas, it's hard to gas up that amener, but it's worth it. <laughs> just, go, just go ahead and get the premium. Put it right in that engine and get that amener cranked up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Amen. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 23. We'll look in verse 7. I'm teaching a sermon series entitled, As a Man Thinks in His Heart, So Is He. This is lesson number 5, and we're talking about like-minded believers tonight. As a man thinks in his heart. Are you in Proverbs 23 and 7? We're going to underline that. We're going to put smiley faces beside that. We're going to highlight it with our yellow pen. And everybody's going to say it out loud together right now. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. We're going to do it again. One, two, three, read. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Can we put up slide number two? The, the premise of this sermon series teaching is number one that your head analyzes things, but your heart believes things. There's a different operation between your head and your heart. There's a lot of thoughts that will pop into your head that just go in one ear, out the other ear, and they're gone, and that's fine, good riddance. But it's the things that pass from the head to the heart that take root, and that becomes the believer. Paul tells us in Romans 10, 10, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth one confesses unto salvation. So the heart is is the womb of the Spirit where life is created, and that is your believer. What takes root in your heart is what shapes your life. So it's so very important. You can read this Bible analytically with your head and not believe a word of it, but what gets down into your heart... Come on, church. We got any believers in the house? That's why we're called believers, glory to God. So number one, the head analyzes, the heart believes. Number two, what you agree with is what passes from the head to the heart. Uh, the, th the thoughts that you agree with, that you say amen to, those are the thoughts that don't just evaporate. Those are the ones that sink down and get into the good soil of your heart. And you want to make sure that they are good thoughts. You want to filter those thoughts. So number three, you've got to be very strategic about what gets down into your heart for as a man thinks in his heart so is he I said so is he so we have to be very strategic about what gets down into our heart and we filter what gets into our heart according to the Word of God. Does it agree with the Word of God or does it not agree with the Word of God? If it doesn't agree with the Word of God, we reject it. If it agrees with the Word of God, we say, okay, I believe it, I receive it, I get it down into the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's my Word. Come on, somebody. And so you have to be very strategic. This is called washing of the water of the Word, Ephesians chapter 5. We wash away every spot and wrinkle of negative thinking, doubt-filled thinking, fear-filled thinking. We wash it away. We filter it according to the Word of God. And then number four... What you become or you become what you believe. What you believe is what you become. So the word that you receive into your heart, if it's a negative word, but you believe it, you become it. If somebody's telling you that you can't, you won't, it'll never happen. You're not smart enough, not good enough, and you believe that thing, that will fulfill itself in your life because what you believe is what you become, good or bad. But if you get that filtered out of your life, you say, that's not the Word of God because the Bible says I am what the Bible says I am. I have what the Bible says I have. I can do what the Bible says I can do. So I reject all that negative stuff. I receive receive what God says about me. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer, so on and so forth. You believe those things, and those things then, you become those things. I said, you become what you believe. Everybody say that out loud. I become what I believe. So what you believe is very important. If you believe the wrong thing, number five, if you believe the wrong thing, it can be uh, can become a stronghold. 
A wrong thought that takes root in your heart can become a stronghold. And a stronghold is nothing more than a wrong thought that's taken root. And the thing is, because it's taken root, it's hard to get rid of. But you can get rid of it. We've already preached on that. It, we can get rid of those strongholds. They can be destroyed, number six, by the power of God. Strongholds are destroyed by the power of God through spiritual discernment, through truth, through Holy Ghost worship, through Holy Ghost prayer. And number uh, seven, strongholds can be... No, oh, I'm so sorry. It's number six, strongholds kill hopes and dreams and purpose. That's why they're so dangerous. It's a wrong thought that's taken root that's killing your hopes and dreams and desires. But those strongholds can come down. Say those walls of Jericho can come a-tumbling down. Hallelujah. And they do because the power of God is in your life to bring those down. And once they're down, you let the peace peace of God rule your heart. Amen. I said, let peace rule your heart. Colossians 3 and 15. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Last week we talked about number nine, elevated thinking. Elevated thinking is setting your mind on things above. Look with me in Colossians 3. Verses 1 and 2. If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, which Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Number 2. Set your mind on things above and not on things of the earth. Listen, it's good to be heavenly minded because we, we need to have it shored up in our lives that we're going to heaven. <laughs> Anybody here not going to heaven? Everybody heaven bound? That's a good place to say amen. That's a good thing to be, have your mind fixed on. I'm going to heaven. No matter how bad my day is down here, I know ultimately one day in the future, I'll hear a shout, I'll hear a trump. I'm going up, and I'm going to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. But it's also good to set your mind on things above your current circumstance. The waves may be high, the winds may be strong, but I'm going to set my mind above my circumstance on the things of God. Come on, that I'm more than a conqueror, that I'm an overcomer, that I can speak to this mountain and say, be thou removed. Oh, if I find myself in the valley of the shadow of death, I know he is with me. His rod, his staff, they comfort me. Glory to God. I mean, you can always lift your mind above your circumstance. I I'm not saying that your circumstance aren't tough. I'm just saying the Lord it's tougher. I'm not saying that the valley's not deep. I'm just saying God's with you. He's going to get you through it. Glory to God. I'm not saying that the waves aren't high and the wind isn't strong. I'm just saying Jesus is in the boat and he's not going to let you sink. He's not going to let you sink. Glory to God. So elevated thinking is thinking above your circumstance. Now, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So it's important that in our heart, our heart's thoughts are above our circumstance, our victorious thoughts. I'm overcoming this thing. I'm getting through this thing. This thing isn't beating me. The devil is a defeated foe. I'm, I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be wealthy. God's on my side. Angels are for me. The, the favor of God surrounds me as a shield. Come on. So your elevated thinking is thinking above your circumstance. That's kingdom thinking. Thinking about heaven is heavenly thinking, but thinking above your circumstance, that's kingdom thinking. And I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, elevated thinking is so very important. And one of the support structures we have for ele elevated thinking is like minded believers. Everybody say like-minded believers. We need people speaking faith into our lives to keep our thought process above the circumstance. Come on somebody. Above our situation. We need folks that are like-minded that will come alongside of us and say, hey listen, I know you're going through something, but listen, I went through it. Jesus got me through it and I came out victorious. You're going to come out victorious. Victorious. We're on the winning side of this thing. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Amen. Amen. I'm going to wait for another amen. amen. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's right. Elevated thinking relies on the support of like-minded believers. That's why we're in church. That's why we're in home groups. 
That's why we're in the Word of God. That's why you're here tonight. Because we need, to, we need each other. We need like-minded believers. Look with me in Philippians 2, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if there's any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Listen, if you become what you believe, then you need like-minded believers to help you become what God has designed you to be. You need somebody speaking the word with you. You need somebody agreeing with the word with you. There's plenty of folks that are talking us down. There's plenty of folks who are saying that we can't. There's plenty of folks that want to see us fail. But we need some like-minded believers that will come alongside of us and say, Hey, let me just remind you what the word of God says about that. Let me just remind you what the word of God says. You're the healed of the Lord, for by his stripes you are healed. Everything you put your hand to will prosper. We need like-minded Minded believers, come on, somebody. <laughs> Fulfill my joy by being like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Everybody get ready to read Philippians 2 and 2. Everybody read 1, 2, 3, read. Fulfill my joy by being like minded, having the same love, being of one accord. And of one mind. We need to find folks that will feed our faith. You need that person on the pew beside you. We need to find folks that will feed our faith and not laugh at our vision and laugh at our purpose, but will stick up for us and come alongside of us and pray for us and encourage us and edify us in the faith. And when we're down, they're going to lift us up. I tell you what, we need people of faith that are not going to cast the rocks, but are going to be an Aaron and a Her that will lift our hands up in the time of battle. We're fighting enough battles, we shouldn't have to fight by ourselves. I'm going to say that again. We're fighting enough battles, we shouldn't have to fight by ourselves. We need people of faith. We need like-minded believers. Like-minded believers. Now, I've told you, we've got to filter our thoughts because if the thought doesn't line up with the Word of God, we don't need it in our heart. We've got to filter our thoughts. There's enough negative junk out there. Things that pop into our head, negative junk. But we don't need to get it down into our We need to filter our thoughts. But sometimes we need to filter our associations. Because if they ain't faith folks, they ain't positive folks, they ain't Jesus folks, they ain't Holy Ghost folks, they ain't Word folks, they just can't do that much for you. It's not that we don't like them. It's not that we don't love them. It's not that we don't want to see them come into the kingdom and get full of faith and the Holy Ghost and the Word them, themselves. But, but if they're not Word folks and they're not faith folks and they're not Jesus folks, and they, they just can't do that much for you. And probably the truth of it is they don't want you to be a faith folk, Jesus folks, Holy Ghost folk, church-going folk, a Bible folk. They just don't want you to be... Come on. You know I'm telling the truth. So we, we have to be careful that in our, in our close uh, circle of association that we're surrounded by faith. Because we're on earth to do something important for God. We're ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're kingdom ambassadors. We're here to do something important for God. And we can't mess around in this life. And, and if there's people that want to tear us down and people that want to see us faith, fail and people that want to laugh if, if we should stumble, we, we just don't need to associate with that. We, yeah, we want to see them come to the Lord. Of course we do. And we love them. But in our circle of encouragement, we need faith-filled folks. We need love like-minded believers and listen not everybody that goes to church is a like-minded believer 
<laughs> Amen. Hope I didn't hurt anybody's feelings on television and internet. But not everybody that goes to church is a like-minded believer. Because I preach healing and I preach prosperity and I preach that God loves you beyond measure and I preach that God seeks to do you good all the day long and I preach that you're a joint heir with Jesus Christ and I preach that you're an overcomer, you're not the overcome and you're a conqueror, you're not the conquered. Because I preach that, the majority of the church is upset with me. Come on. So I love them. And I'll fellowship with them, but they're not getting into my small circle of faith-filled believers. What, you know why? They can't do anything for me. I said they can't do anything for me. How can they edify me in the faith to move to the next level of my spirituality if they don't even believe that God's anointing by the Holy Ghost wants me healthy, wealthy, and wise in the things of the Lord? Hallelujah. Come on. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's begin in verse 33. Don't be deceived. Don't be misled. Evil, I'm reading the Amplified. Evil companionships, communication, or communion and associations, corrupt and depraved good manners, moral and character. Hey, if you hang out with the wrong folks, look out. I said if you hang out with the wrong folks, look out. But he says, awake in verse 34. Awake from your drunken stupor and return to sober sense and your right minds. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Don't get around the wrong folks that are going to mess with your thinking and mess with what's in your heart and get the wrong thought process in your life. I tell you, when you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and you get filled with the Holy Ghost and you become a word person, all of a sudden you begin to realize, I don't agree with him. I don't agree with her. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with this and that and that other thing. And let me tell you, unless two are in agreement, how can they walk together? Amen three and three after a while even though you love folks you begin to see them falling away because you just don't agree with them how can you walk together lest you be in agreement some of those old friends those lifelong friends yeah you love them but you just don't agree with them anymore and, and so you, you you may send a postcard at Christmas but they're not in your intimate circle of faith-filled friends because they can't do anything for your faith. And we are in the last days of the last days of the last days. And we got to do something for God. And so we've got to be surrounded with like-minded believers. Because we need other folks speaking into our life the word of God. Is anybody with me tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now this is the way the early church was in Acts 1. In verse 13, they all went up into the upper room. List all the, the disciples of Christ, the apostles, 120 of them. And they continued in verse 14. These all continued in one accord. Everybody say one accord. That's a powerful statement right there. In one accord, they were of like mind, like faith, same word, same belief. We believe Jesus Christ was crucified, dead, resurrected. We believe that he said if we would hang out, he'd send the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and he did thank God and he did so they were in one accord in prayer and supplication then look in Acts 2 the Holy Ghost came look in verse 41 and they gladly received the word were baptized that day about 3,000 souls were added to them 3,000 people on the day of Pentecost came to the Lord Jesus on that day Peter preached a sermon and 3,000 souls came to Jesus and what does it say about them in verse 42? And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayer. Fear came upon every soul, reverence, and signs and wonders were done through the apostles. So they continued steadfastly in doctrine, in fellowship, in breaking of bread, having dinners, and in prayer. Spirit of one accord. Powerful, powerful. We need to be surrounded. You need to be surrounded with like-minded believers. If you're going to keep your thoughts elevated above your circumstance. Hallelujah. Now, 
Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. If you're going to feed elevated thinking, and we must, if we're going to feed elevated thinking, then we need like-minded believers to come alongside of us and supply us with necessary edification. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification. Edification means to build up. And edifice is a building. Edify is, means to build, to build up the, the building, your spiritual building, your, this temple right here. Edification. And it says necessary. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary? Everybody say necessary. Yes. Necessary edification. So is edification necessary? Yes. Where does it come from? The words that you hear. Don't let any corrupt word get into your heart. But no, only let the necessary edification come into your heart. Why? Because that it may impart grace to the hearers. What you need is grace. What I need is grace. Grace is the enabling power of God. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. What we need more in our life is, uh, is grace. Everybody say grace. Power of God in your life. Grace. Where does it come from? The right words spoken at the right time with the right heart into your life when you need that necessary. I said that necessary. It's not an optional thing. It's not just an, an add-on thing. It's a necessary thing. You need that necessary edification. And it comes from the right word spoken at the right time. And then grace. You're, you're going through it. You're in the thick of it. You're in the midst of the battle. You need grace, power of God. You need grace for it. You're thinking, I'm on my last leg. I'm on my last nerve. I'm going down for the third time. I'm at the end. I'm done. I need grace. And somebody comes along with some necessary edification. Oh, yeah. Say, man, this is it. I'm finished. I'm done. I quit. I, this, I'm handing in the resignation. I'm, I'm over this thing. I remember in the, in the early days of ministry, we were meeting in a ballroom, and we'd been meeting there so long that I was done. I'm finished. I was done. I remember packing up the car. We had this little tiny car and all of the sound equipment that we could possibly fit into that car, and it was like a, a puzzle. Everything had to go in just the right way. You had to push the chair all the way forward so that the steering wheel was like this. Every, everything in the trunk, everything in the back, Back seat, everything, everything was between our seats, up over our heads every single Sunday. It was misery, let me tell you. Uh, welcome to the ministry. And it was, it was horrendous. And I remember getting the last piece of equipment into the trunk and closing the lid of the trunk saying, that's it, man. I'm done. I said, God, I'm done. This is the last time I am packing this car. I am done with this. If you do not open a church building for me this week, I am done with this whole thing. I said that right to God, didn't I? I told him right in that parking garage, this is it. There is no more grace left. I said it. And if y'all are thinking about telling me about working in the nursery, don't say those words. <laughs> Some of y'all say, that's the way I feel about working in the nursery. No, you don't. There's grace. There's grace. And that week, I said, that week, that week, I was driving down the road. I saw a church building. I said, I'm pulling into that church. I'm talking to the pastor. I pulled into the church building. And I said, Pastor, let me tell you my heart. I need your building. I need your building. Now, this is a church that was meeting in that building. I said, sir, I need your building. I'm in the ministry. I'm young. I'm in the ministry. I need your building. And if you wouldn't mind letting our church meet in your building in the afternoons, he says, I'll tell you what. I'm retiring this week, and I'm looking for someone to take this building. And if you'll just take this building and take the, the monthly payments on it. It's your building. I said, that's a deal. Glory to God. See, God was just waiting for me to say, I'm done. That's it. That's it. I need an answer. And necessary edification came into my life. Hallelujah. And I got grace. I said, I got grace. Come on, somebody say, I got grace. I got grace. Hallelujah. Everybody say necessary edification. necessary edification. 
Yeah, it's necessary. I want to talk about the four levels of associations that like-minded believers need in their lives. Four levels of, of association with like-minded believers. Four levels of association that supply necessary edification. Four levels. And let's begin with level number four. This is slide number three, I think. This is level number four, and I'm calling this the level of inspiration. The level of inspiration. You need inspiration. I need inspiration. We need a point of inspiration in our lives to keep us at an elevated thought process, to keep our thinking above our circumstances. I'm talking about your thinking that is above what your eyes see. I'm talking about a thinking that is above what you hear other people say. I'm talking about thinking that is above what the world is telling you. I'm talking about elevated thinking. And in level four, in this level, you simply need inspiration. You need to expand your experience. You need to expand your exposure. And, and, and what do I mean by that? I mean, if you feel that you have a calling to be a, a pastor of a huge church. You know what you need to do? You need to go and find a huge church and go stand in the middle of it and see what that feels like. If you feel like you should be a great artist, you need to go to the Louvre and stand in the middle of it and see what that feels like. If you feel like you should be a great golfer, you need to go to Augusta and they won't let you on the course but climb the fence and run out there anyways for a few minutes before they catch you and stand on the 18th hole or the 16th hole, the amen corner, and enjoy it for a minute. You just need to get into a place that inspires you. Well, I'm talking about the association with inspiration. And then when you're there, you need to take a selfie of you standing in the middle of that big church or if you want to play football in that stadium or if you want to be a great actor in Broadway or if you want to be a great all, uh, 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 golfer at Augusta, or just wherever that it feeds your faith, you need to take a picture of it. You need to put that on your cell phone, make it the screensaver on your cell phone or the wallpaper on your cell phone so you can look at that thing and say, I was there. I remember what that felt like. I can do this thing. Look at me standing in the middle of this. Do you all understand what I'm saying? You need an association with inspiration. Come on. And you need to go to where there is a point of inspiration that feeds your faith and see yourself standing right in the middle of it. If you want to be a great golfer, you need to go to a great golf tournament. And stand by the 18th hole. And when Tiger Woods goes by, you need to grab him and take a selfie real quick. And then let him go on and finish the game. So you can say, look at this. Me and Tiger. Best buddies. Glory to God. <laughs> That's right. Remember that day when I was hanging out with Tiger? Oh, yeah. It was a good day. Good day. But I'm talking, I'm talking about level four, the level of association with inspiration. Now I want to talk about level three. Level three is exposure. You, in level three, we need to expand our circle of influences to include those who think bigger than we do. See bigger, do bigger, so that, that the influencers in our, you know, there's something wrong with this, uh, us four and no more. You know, you get into that little pond, and you may be the big, big fish in the little pond, but that little pond is going to keep you. You need to get into the ocean where the big fish swim, 
where the big dogs run. Come on, somebody. And, and we need to get around folks that think bigger, talk bigger, believe bigger, do bigger than us so that we are associating with a whole new realm of thinkers, of possibilities, of talkers, of doers. I remember I was, I was invited to a luncheon with a, a very, very wealthy man. And um, he took an interest in me, invited me to a, a luncheon of his men's group. He was a great believer, is a great believer, and invited me to this luncheon. And uh, he says, uh, he says, Pastor James, I want you to come to this luncheon at this men's convention. And, and um, very few people are going to be there uh, with us, but I just want you to be there and hang out, okay? And I said, well, I would love to, love to go. And so... When I got there to the luncheon, man, it was an exclusive club that they were eating in, and, and, we, and we went through all the tables into the very back room, and in there is a, is the, is a table set up at, along the walls and around the circle, and, and so I'm sitting beside him, and uh, the guest speaker came in, and we started sharing a very inspirational message, and he says, you know, before I go any farther, let me, let me just ask, uh, who's with us today? If everybody could kind of introduce themselves very quickly, We'll just move around the room. And so he started here. I'm sitting over here. He started here. He started moving around the room. This guy owned an NBA team. This guy owned an NFL team. This guy owned a, a software corporation. This guy just was flew in on his Learjet, owned something or other, moving around the room. And, and as they're moving around the room, I'm thinking, my goodness gracious, what am I doing in this room? <laughs> what, what am I going to say? when they get around to me. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You need to be around people who think bigger, who talk bigger, who've done it before. You need to be around possibility people. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, praise the Lord. You say, Pastor, what did you say when they got around to you. I'll tell you that on Sunday. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you need exposure to bigger, to better, to more excellence. We need exposure to bigger and to better, to more excellence. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So be it. You know, one day I want to fly on a Learjet. I've never flown on a Learjet. I want to fly on a Learjet without having to steal it or anything. I want to get, I want to get on that Learjet because I've been invited to be on that Learjet. I want to fly on that Learjet just to fly on it. Come on. Just to fly on it. Why not? Other people get to fly on Learjets. Amen. That's right. Glory to God. So level, level three is expand your circle of influencers. And listen, you can do this very simply. Well, because of media nowadays, we, there's so many things on YouTube, so many th videos available, so many, every little gadget that you hand, hand, can hand, put in your hand. You can listen to T.D. Jakes. You can listen to Miles Monroe. You can listen to just you can listen to Debbie on Friday. You can listen to all these great preachers now and have have your uh, your ele your thoughts elevated to another level of possibilities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Great thinkers, praise the Lord. Level two. Level two has to do with team building your vision team. You know, we need people that are around us that don't laugh when we talk about our vision. People that don't mock us when we talk about our vision. People that believe with us when we talk about our vision. Uh, we need people around us that, that don't try and talk us out of our vision. You know, we need people around us that, that, that will say, hey, did you hear that from God? Yeah, I heard that from God. Okay, let's do that then. Come on. We, we, we got enough people in the world that are trying to talk us out of stuff. We need some folks that are trying to talk us into stuff, into some God things. Glory to God. Amen. So we need to build our vision team. You know, Jesus had his three. Jesus had his 12. Jesus had his 70. Jesus had his multitudes. 
We, we need that. We need our three. We need our 12. We need our 70. We need the folks that will go up the mountain with us into that Mount of Transfiguration. We need the folks that will be in the thick of battle with us. We need the folks that when everybody else is leaving, you know there was a day when everybody left Jesus and he turned to his own disciples and he said, are you going too? Because he was talking about his own sacrifice, drinking his blood, eating his flesh, talking about the crucifixion. And everybody said, that's too much for us. We're out of here. We're leaving. And he turned to his own disciples, to the twelve. He said, are y'all leaving too? And they said, where would we go? You have the words of life. We need some folks that will stand with us. <laughs> when we're really talking about the big vision, when we're talking about the God vision, when we're talking about seemingly the impossible vision, some folks will say, you got the word of life. We're going to hang out here. We like what we see going on here, glory to God. We need to build our vision team. Matthew 18 and 19 says, If any two on earth agree as touching anything, as touching anything, if any two agree on earth as touching anything that they should ask, it shall be done. Everybody say, It shall be done. Come on, say, It shall be done. For them of our Father who is in heaven. It shall be done. Why? Because there's agreement. There's power in agreement. We, you need some uh, people on your vision team that will agree with you. That won't fight you tooth and nail. That won't, that won't bring up all the... That just can't work. That'll never work. That's just impossible. It can't happen. Too big, too, too expensive, too much, too this, too that. Listen, we need some folks to say, if God gave that to you, it can be done. Listen, if, if God can tell Noah to build a boat and he build a boat and it saved humanity God can tell any of us to do anything and it's going to work out okay Amen. hallelujah thank you Jesus amen and level one finishing up level one this is the mentor level this is where we find our shadow and we stand in it there's there's Moses casts a shadow that's where you find a Joshua this is the mentor level right here. I spent most of my ministry standing in somebody's shadow. And that's a good thing. First their shadow right there. They got me started right. Got my doctrine right. Got me straightened out. Got me saved. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Married to that girl. It was all good. Hallelujah. Taught me the word of God. Standing in somebody's shadow. Joshua's are found in the shadows of Moses. But that's where the action's at. That's where you learn how to think big. That's where you learn how God imparts things to Moses's. Because eventually you're going to want God to impart something to you. So you need to stand in the shadow of somebody that's receiving from God now. So you learn how to wear that mantle when Moses has died and the mantle gets passed along. God's going to look for someone to give it to. Come on, somebody. Exodus 24, verse, verses 12 through 14, Young's literal translation. And Jehovah said to Moses, Come up to me in the mount and be there, and I will give thee the tables of stone, the law, the command that I have written to direct them. Verse 13. And Moses rising, Joshua, his minister also, and Moses goes up into the mountain of God. Uh, listen, the elders got to the edge of the mountain, but Joshua went up the mountain with Moses. <laughs> you find Joshua in the shadow of a Moses. That's where you want to be. You want to be found in the shadow of a mentor that will teach you how to receive from God because the day is coming that you're going to have to receive from God. Come on, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Numbers 27, verse 16. O Lord, your God, this is Moses, who gives breath to all creatures, please appoint a new man as the leader for this community. Verse 17. Give them someone who will guide them wherever they go. Lead them into battle so the community of the Lord will not be like sheep without the shepherd. In verse 18, the Lord said, take Joshua. Not hard to find. He's been in your shadow for years. For 40 years, take Joshua, the son of Nun, 
who has the Spirit in him, and lay your hands on him. Present him to Eleazar, the priest before the whole community, and publicly commission him to lead the people and transfer some of your authority to him so the whole community of Israel will obey him. Level one is the mentor association. And that mentor association is getting you ready to do, for God to do in you what God has done in them. You just got to be close enough to see how God does it. How do you receive from God? How do you climb the mountain of God? How do you get the commandments handed down from God? How do you get the mantle of God transferred to Him onto you in your life? You've got to stand close enough to see God doing it in their life so you know how God will do it in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We feed elevated thinking with four levels of associations. Level number four is the level of inspiration. Associate yourself with something that inspires you, that elevates your thinking. Get yourself into a place that has the wow factor. That you say, you know what? This is awesome. I would like my life to be like this. And then take a picture of yourself in it. So you'll never forget it. Level number three is exposure. Getting around people that think bigger than you, talk bigger than you, have done it already. Level number two is when you build your vision team. You get that intimate circle around you, the three, the 12, the 70. You get that intimate circle around you that don't desert you. But they know God's spoken to you. And they want to see that vision come to pass in your life. And then level number one is that mentor level, standing in the shadow of someone that God is moving mightily in their life so you can learn how to receive a vision from God, to receive that and know how to implement that vision from God so that there's a transfer of the mantle. Hallelujah. Elevate your thinking above your circumstance and one of the best ways we ensure that happens is by the associations we have with like-minded believers do you get anything out of this tonight praise the lord glory to god stand with me if you would